Okay, so for day one of the class, we've already covered the syllabus in general. Let's cover more, a couple more uh, in-depth things here. Uh, go ahead and open up your web browser, any web browser you like. We've got all the popular ones down here. And let's go over to the website developer.apple.com. Let's take a quick look at the website developer.apple.com. Usually when I'm doing the lectures, I'm also taking notes in a little notepad file here. And I'm going to put these notes into the network folder at the end of the day. I'll remind you where the network folder is a little later. You can take your own notes on paper. We've got Word and Notepad on these computers. We've got brackets and other code editors, but I'll be writing my notes and I'll put these notes in the folder at the end of the day. Traditional app development process. Learn the language of the specific platform. We've got developer.apple.com for iOS devices, iPhone, iPad, Mac OS. So then we've got developer.android.com, um, that's for Android devices. We've also got uh, Windows devices. Guess, guess what's the link for that one? Developer.windows.com. Now these are the these are the three big platforms. Um, actually, in order, I should put it like this: in order of market share, Android, iOS, Windows. So for mobile devices, this is the general market share. There are more Android devices out there than iOS or Windows devices, mobile devices like phones and tablets. Uh, even though perhaps Apple has the biggest mind share, maybe it's the most famous and it guides the industry and all of that, but Android devices are the biggest market. Um, then we've got iPads and all of that, and there's Windows devices. Uh, now there's another kind of device um, that is also popular, uh, most commonly perhaps for reading books. What might that other device be? Kindle. Kindle devices. So we've also got developer.amazon.com. Kindle, which is a variation of Android. Well, in the old days, I would have to go to all of these websites, read the documentation, learn how it all works, make an app, and then relearn the next language and apply it to the other platform. Our more modern way use a framework, aka library, aka magic, to convert common web languages to native languages. And that one is cordova.apache.org. We'll get into all of the nuances of all of this, of course. But we can take what we might already know about HTML and CSS and JavaScript and jQuery and all that cool stuff. And those all sound like website languages. They are. But with the Cordova library, the Cordova framework, it will for us basically convert that web code into the right code for the right platform. Android is Java. IOS had usually been Objective-C, and now they're going towards Swift, another language. Windows had been uh, C-sharp. And uh, Kindle, because it's based on Android, basically Java. So three huge languages, or use what you already know.
That's the big idea of this class. There are pros and cons, which we'll get to, of course. There's mostly pros. There's mostly positives doing it this way. We, we'll cover the, the positives and negatives, of course, but that's the idea in general. So just to look at here, uh, Apple recently had their big developers conference, and what's new, and there's the there's the IDE, here's where you program your app, but it only then works on iOS devices. Uh, I would go here to learn all about, well, how do I design an Apple or an iOS app that feels like an iOS app? What are the guidelines and all of that? So that's all there for free to look at and to learn. How do I then uh, develop it? How do I then code it? It's all right here. Uh, how do I then distribute it, uh, put it in the App Store and all of that? It's all here, but only for iOS. So if we were looking at, just quickly here, developer.android, same sort of thing. You get the official documentation about how to build for Android. You get the official software. Uh, you get your developer's console to check how many downloads you've had and how much money you're making and all of that. You're going to get rich 99 cents at a time and all of that. And then lastly, well, uh, then developer.windows.com, same thing. I want to uh, develop for Windows, which is phones. They have a very, very, very small market share. It's like 1%. But they have things like tablets, like Surface tablets, which are popular. And then they're trying to do things like holographic glasses and all of that. Well, if you want to get that platform, your app on that platform, you'd have to learn another language. And all the documentation on how to do that and sample code and all of that is there. And then lastly, we've got developer.amazon.com. Well, I want to make an app that works on uh, their, apps, their app store there for their Kindle devices and such. Well, I'd learn how to read. I mean, I'd read the uh, documentation and learn how to program it and distribute it and all of that in my apps on Amazon. We're going to distill all of that and use uh, cordova.apache.org. You create mobile apps with the languages that you know and target platforms with one code base and it's open source. Get started documentation, tips, help, and all of that. So we'll be browsing this site more for our documentation, for our help and such, uh, less than these other ones because we're going to be using a more universal sort of code. It is useful to read the documentation on all of the platforms, of course. But we're going to focus here, so just like just quickly to show you something here. If I look at documentation, I get, so this is way better than the book. Here's your book, here's all the chapters, read all of that, that's your homework by Thursday. So uh, just kidding, just kidding. So uh, here's the documentation. Okay, I wanna learn how to, um, how to uh, use geolocation. I wanna write code so that the app can determine where you are and put me on a map. Okay, here's a chapter on that, geolocation. I want to uh, make the, my app take a photo. I have this great uh, ancestry app I want to make. And we're going to take a photo of the person to save it in the database. Well, here's how to use the camera. In all of these languages, you would write a specific code to access the camera. Well, here, if I look at one of these, if you have experience in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, hopefully that looks familiar. That's JavaScript. That's an event listener right there document .add event listener. which event device ready result function callback uh, bubbling and capture and function take a photo now it's going to be deeper than that of course but it's going to be JavaScript it's going to be CSS it's going to be HTML so if you have that experience already we're going to build on top of it if you don't have experience in HTML and CSS and all of that you will have to do a little bit of work outside on your own to catch up a little bit on that because I, I can't cover the basics of, here's HTML. We have various other classes for that. So if you have, you know, basic plus or intermediate sort of experience in these languages, that'll be very helpful. If you have zero experience, you'll have to work a little harder. But I do get people coming in that they have no experience at all, and they are able to complete the class 
And even though there's still a lot to learn, they're confident enough in starting their app development careers. And I do have to say, by the end of the course, you're not going to create the next Facebook. You're not going to create the next um, you know, Instagram. Those big kinds of apps that are very powerful and very feature-filled, we're not going to get to that point. But as you see in the Cordova documentation, we can le learn how to access the camera of any device. We can learn how to access the media stored on a device. We can access vibration of a device. We can access a variety of things in a device. So these are going to be the pieces, the building blocks for something big. I want to learn how to access Bluetooth. My app needs to connect with another um, phone and transfer data. Well, that's going to be Bluetooth. And instead of learning the specific code in Java or C Sharp, we learn the JavaScript way. And then Cordova will basically translate the code to the right language. It's a lot of documentation. It's very dry, but it's very good, very useful. And together, we will uh, read it, understand it, and apply it. Any questions so far? So is it Cordova like a transistor or something that I can do with different Android, between Android, or like Apple and Windows? Sorry, what was the first part? How is it different? I mean, like, if you doing, like, something, for example, for a camera feature, and uh, after using Bordeaux, we can use for Java or uh, not not quite you you don't have to worry about knowing the other languages you just have to know how to write it in JavaScript uh, and Cordova behind the scenes will then translate the JavaScript code into Java or Objective-C for you yeah this is what this is how I describe it about that uh, Cordova will be the library the magic that will take the JavaScript code and put it into it. Um, yes. After, after it's exported, or mm -hmm. um, on iOS, yeah, exported. Is sure. it um? Can you edit it if you like? Let's say if you edit it, if you export it for Android, can you edit it on Android? That's a good point. Um, let me just say briefly right here. Workflow options, native dev environment, creating native code to device or you can say universal uh, dev environment I don't have spell check on this so pardon going to um, universal code going to all devices unfortunately it is a little difficult to do both of these branches, both of these workflows. If you start on native, you're not going to be able to work with Cordova very easily, and vice versa. If you start in Cordova, you won't be able to open that code very easily in, let's say, Xcode or the other environments, the other IDEs. So it is doable, but that is something to consider early on that you are locked in a sort of workflow that you can't quite jump to the other very easily. That's one of the downsides of doing it this way. But it's also a downside is I learned Objective-C, and now I can't open my Objective-C file in Visual Studio. So that's just the nature of it. Second question? Um, is it going to be like vanilla JavaScript, or will there be like ES6 functional? It's going to be at the basic vanilla JavaScript, but any ES6 experience that you have will be applicable. Any libraries that you know or syntax and such that you want to use could be applicable. Yeah. But I'll just go with uh, usually uh, plain vanilla JavaScript and a little jQuery, and then anything you know besides that, you can use it. Yeah. Another question? Yeah. The apps that we need, the majority of the apps that we see on like Android or Google Play or uh, App Store for Apple, <coughs> are they made in Cordova or are they made with the native language? They're made in both. Um, in the App Store, they will accept uh, Cordova versions or native code versions. And there are many apps, and we can see app examples, uh, you know, official app examples, 
uh, that are in Cordova. So there are, I can't tell you exactly the statistics, I would like to look that up to know that answer myself, but yes, there are Cordova created apps as well as native apps all on all the app stores. Yes. It basically is. Cordova is the translator. So it will take the the basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and translate it to Java or Objective C or C Sharp. So it is the translator, basically. And what is the benefit of having all of these languages versus just one that's going to be applicable to everyone and everyone can understand it? What's the benefit of having so many cars? Every manufacturer says their car's the best, and no one's going to agree on one. And that's how this was. That the Apple company said, here's the best language for apps. And then the Android company said, no, here's the best language for apps. So everyone's got their own language. That is a problem. That is annoying. But then that's why the Cordova uh, organization exists, to try to put it all together easily into one. Question? If we have to update the apps that come down the road, do we do it in Cordova? Mm -hmm. And that would automatically Yes, and we will be covering that. We'll be covering creating our app version 1 and publishing it. And then we'll be covering, well, how do I update it to version 2? So yeah, we'll, we'll cover all of that. Uh, question? You remember, raise your hand. Yes. Does Cordova conversion add to the size and the cycle, CPU cycle? It doesn't add to the final project, um, but it does add during development because you have to cover different uh, platforms at once. So like your working file would be two times or three times larger because you're working with three operating systems at once. But once you export, once you compile to the right, to the specific platform, it will only have the code for that platform, so it won't really make it big. Yes? Are we going to present our app at the end of the class? You're just going to submit it to, uh, to me. It'll be a one-on-one -on -one submission to me. Um, we can do extra credit if people want to show their app. Sure. Yes. yes. Is it open source? Yes, Cordova is open source and um, usable for uh, commercial or non-commercial purposes. So Cordova is open source. Yes. Is one that um, native dev or native dev is one that's more preferred for debugging and um, kind of testing process? No, um, not not really for develop uh, for debugging and such. No, you'll be able to plug your device into your universal development environment and debug right on the device in the IDE. So it's just basically do you, do you want to hit as many as possible or, or one at a time and they both are going to be basically the same for debugging and testing and such okay so um, class downside to be able to compile or export to devices, you need a device to compile to an Android device. You need a computer and a device to compile to iOS. You need a Mac and a device. What's the difference that I wrote here? We need a computer, Windows or Mac, or Linux. Here you need a Mac. Our downside is, if you look around, there's no Macs. Well, except those that people brought in themselves. But this is a, this is a Windows lab. So we will not be able to directly compile our projects to a Mac device unless you bring your Mac laptop to compile to it. All the software we'll be talking about, it's all free to download, open source, and all of that, and I'll cover where to download it and, and all of that. But when we're doing our testing and such in class, we're going to be testing on Android devices. How many of you, raise your hand, have an Android device? OK, cool. How many of you also brought your cable? You don't need it yet. You don't need it until part two 
of the class. Part one, we're going to cover the basic uh, coding and the basic structure, the basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Then in part two, we're going to move into the app development environment and then test on real devices. So if you've got an Android device, you, you'll be able to set it up and plug in your device directly to our computer and transfer your app directly to the device and test it on real devices, tablets or phones, but Android. You've got an iPhone. How many of you brought an iPhone? How many of you brought your iPhone cable? Okay, so same sort of thing. Uh, you need your cable, but you also need a, a Mac. We don't have any Macs um, allocated to us. So you will also have to test on an Android device. Good thing is, I have tablets to borrow or to share during class. So I can check out to you an Android device. And you can test it tangibly and see the result. Because we will be able to uh, test, debug, compile uh, to real devices, Android, or virtual devices, which are emulators, simulators. We will also be able to open up a little iPhone or a little Android phone on screen and see our apps there. Uh, the downside, of course, on that is if you're testing, does the vibration work? Well, your computer's not going to vibrate. Uh, so you need a real device on that. But I have, we have devices for you to check out. And we do take all major credit cards. <laughs> Just your ID, and then I pass it out, and you get a device for the day. You can't take it with you. You cannot take it home, unfortunately. Just during class time, you can check out a device. But if you've got your own device, even better, because then you're going to be working on your device as you see fit. If you use the class one, randomly you'll get a different one. Recommendation. Use a simple, dedicated Android device for testing. You can use your main phone or tablet, but I recommend a development device. Uh, so I've got my current phone right here, and then I've got an older phone that I keep around just for this. Um, not that it's going to break your phone or void your warranty or anything like that. But I, I want to have just the apps that I'm testing on, on one device, and I want to have everything else here, my contacts and my pictures and all of that. So if you can get an older device to work with, Android device, that would be useful. I would say at least Android 4.4. And you're not going to need a device until part two. Devices are not needed or covered. Until next month, part two and part three. Exactly, that's what I would recommend. That's what this is. This is like a forty-dollar phone, no contract, pay as you go. It's not even activated or anything. It's on Verizon. I don't have Verizon. I have AT and T. So I got this at Best Buy, forty dollars. This is what I use. So if you go to Target, Best Buy, wherever, and you see some of those like. Uh, pay-as-you-go things, you don't even have to activate the, the cell service, right? Because we have Wi-Fi. If you need to test any internet stuff, we have Wi-Fi. Yeah, at least 4.4, pay-as-you-go is good. Okay, so... These are the general ideas that we'll be talking about because our whole process app idea, app coding, app design, so graphics, multimedia, App, uh, app pu publication, app um, promotion, app updates. I'm going to cover all of that. 
it is a lot to cover. Well, you're going to be your own app developer, you need to deal with that. If you're in a team or a studio of app design, well, someone's in charge of the graphics, and someone else is in charge of the text, and someone else is in charge of tweeting about it. Well, all of this you'll be in charge of, because you're going to be your own little app studio. And the great thing is that the barriers to entry are, are very low. To become an official Android developer, I have to check the latest price, but I believe it's $28 one time fee. To become an official uh, Windows developer, I think it's up to like $28 one time fee. To become an official. Apple developer. That's a little different. That is $99 per year. So they have the biggest mind share. They're the 800 pound gorilla, but they're not the biggest uh, market share. But uh, they have these terms for themselves here. If you're targeting these other devices, it's a little more affordable. One time fee as, a, as opposed to recurring fee. And that's going to uh, give you a developer certificate and a distribution portal that's going to get you on the app stores. That's going to get you on Google Play. That's going to get you on the Microsoft Store. That's going to get you on Apple iTunes. Uh, even if you're giving away your apps for free, you have to pay the basic entry fee. To become an official uh, Amazon developer, Amazon is free. To publish your, your apps on Amazon, it's totally free. And the great thing about Amazon is not only will it target Kindle devices, but every other Android device. So this one is, is Android, but this one is Amazon and Android, Kindle and Android. That's the one that we will definitely, eventually, in part three of the class, create and set up. These other ones, because they have an entry fee and I'm not requiring to, for you to purchase that, we won't really go through the process of creating these accounts. But creating this account is going to be very similar on all of these. You set up your uh, payment information and your developer information and your listings and all of that, same as on Amazon. So that's what we're going to do and that's going to be like the final, final homework eventually to actually create the account and actually publish it. Um, but these other ones on the side, you could do them, but they're not going to be required in the class because they're not free. Everything in the class is going to be free. The software, the development tools, the simulators, the publication of it. So these are optional. Any questions? This that I'm writing here, I'm going to put it into the network folder, and then I'm going to remind everyone where the network folder is, and then you can take a copy. Let's take our first break, uh, and when we go and when we come back, we'll start to do a little coding. It's 6:40. We'll take a break until 6:50, um, and stretch your legs. We'll be back at 6:50, and then we'll start to do a little coding. <laughs>